Hey guys, so I realise I'm very close to the camera and I apologise for that. However, there's a reason for it. I wanted to show you this. This is the DigiX. A little while back I made a video about the DigiX and how much I was excited to get it. Uh, I, ordered, I pre ordered it, I didn't get it on Kickstarter, but it was a Kickstarter funded project. And this is the actual board, it has arrived. Um, it comes from Digistump. I'll put all the details in the thingy magic below uh, so you can take a look. But we're going to run through some of the capabilities of this board and why I think it's pretty darn awesome, especially uh, since it doesn't cost all that much money in comparison to other rival boards that you could get. So let's take a bit of a closer look. Right, so here it is in close up. This is the DigiX. Uh, it's a pretty awesome looking board. It looks similar to the Duo, or Du, I still don't know. Uh, we've got the, the low power Wi-Fi here. It's, it really is low power. Um, I haven't tested it, but the, the stated power is five milliamps average usage when it's active. So that's pretty amazing. Um, and it's processor independent as well. So it does all the TCIP stack in here, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got an audio jack here. That, that works alongside the two digital uh, analog converters that are on the board. Um, we've also got the NRF24LO1 Plus module that can stick in here. And it comes with it, so it's just this thing here and it sort of plugs into the section here, if I can line it up properly. So that sort of plugs in there. And if you were to cut the pins a little bit, it would sit a bit lower so it wouldn't interfere with any shields. Um, We've got the sort of micro USB there and a DC barrel jack, um, so you can power your board through there. You can also power it in through uh, through the pins there if you wanted to. It's got an 84 megahertz uh, ARM chip there. It's the Sam X something or other. I'll put that in the description. Um, it's 100% uh, Duo, Duo, and uh, R3 compatible, so it can use those shields. However, if it's got, if you're using legacy shields, ones that require five volt um, kind of signals, then there is this, which is the uh, sort of level shifting shield that can come with this. Um, it is extra, but it is pretty cool. So it's it's well worth a look if you want to uh, if you want to use any legacy shields. Uh, and as you can see, there are different like pin assignments for stuff, so you can have input and output, and you can shift those. But I don't need that just yet. Uh, there are 99 in total input-output pins, so that's an awful lot. That's a lot more than the the Duo or Duo uh, and any other Arduino board out there that I know of. Now, the the whole format here is is like Duo compatible, so the the top line here around here that's all due and then you've got the the Arduino sort of 1.0 shield layout here and then you've got this extra line just along the top here and that's the the extra input output pins on the DigiX. Now this board can kick out a lot of power so from powering it from uh, USB if you've got the power, power available it will kick out 3.3 volts at one amp if you need it. That's how much power the board has available. Um, you obviously have to have that much coming through the USB. On your normal PC it'll be only be about 500 milliamps, but if you're powering it from the DC barrel jack then, then it'll be fine. It'll also kick out around the same at 5 volts, provided you're putting 5 volts at that in. Right, so I imagine you didn't just come here to see me talk about the DigiX a bit and show you it a little bit. Uh, you want to see an example, and I want to show you one. So I'm going to be showing you a server application for the DigiX. So how can it serve pages to the internet, to the wide world? Well, uh, there's an example in the Digify library written by Eric Kettenberg that's really, really good. Uh, I've modified it slightly so that I can serve pages. So just the example I've modified, I haven't modified the library. Just so that I can serve pages to the internet from my home network, which has uh, an IP address which isn't fixed. So when my DCHP license expires, then uh, I get a new IP address. Um, and unfortunately, if I'm serving it from the outside world, I need to have uh, a fixed IP, or an IP address I know at least, because I'm serving it from my server externally, including 
that page in another page. So I've got digix.davidjwatts.com. But unless I know the IP address, I can't do that. So the DigiX is alerting my database to the new IP each time. Now, that can be a bit problematic, but we'll go through some of the, the challenges of it all. And uh, I'll also show you the basic setup so that you can get started straight away. Because you can serve things across your internal network very, very easily. So any device connected to your Wi-Fi router will be able to ping the address uh, that the DigiX has, the IP address, or it can pull off the served pages on port 8080. Um, and you can change that port, it's just what you use in the code. So I'll, I'll show you all of that and we'll, we'll go through some of the applications that it might be, uh, might be useful for. Right, so we've got the DigiX here. It's uh, plugged in to uh, one of those USB plugs. Uh, it's not plugged into my computer, so it's got all the power it needs. We've got the Wi-Fi there, and we've also got, I've connected up this little switch so that it's paused in an infinite loop while pin 99 is high. When it goes low, the Wi-Fi will start connecting and it'll set itself up as a server. So if I just switch that there. So what's happening now is it's connecting to my Wi-Fi network. The Wi-Fi network is going to give it an IP address. Now that's, I've set it up so it's a fixed IP address on my home network and it will start serving a page that I've set uh, on port 8080. Uh, and that in turn will contact, this will then contact the internet, uh, contact my server and say where it is. So it'll give its location away. And then we can look on my television uh, and look at a web page and it will show the DigiX serving the page. So this is my, um, my television. It's got a web browser on it so we can use it to have a look at the page. So I've saved it into my favorites because I didn't want to have to type it in. It's incredibly awkward doing it on a remote control. So let's just go down so you can see there's a page here. It's already got some stuff on it, you see, but it's not cached, so it's going to request it again. And there we go. That's what the DigiX is serving over, over my public network, so my public IP address. It's serving some text. This is a test. And then it's serving up an image that I'm pulling from an external source. So it's not serving off the, the SD card, but that's coming from another server. So that's it. It's coming from digix.davidjwatts.com. And uh, I'll talk about how I've done that uh, when we look at some of the code. Right, so to get started with the DigiX, you're going to want to go to digistump.com forward slash wiki forward slash DigiX. And this is going to get you started on everything. So It'll tell you about installing the DigiX software. So this is um, their stuff of the IDE. So you're going to need to get the 1.5 uh, beta IDE, and then you need to install their add-ons, uh, which includes the, uh, the driver stuff, and it also includes uh, some of their libraries and examples. Now, there can be some trouble installing drivers um, on Windows 8, uh, especially if they're unsigned or it's just having a wobbly, uh, which often happens. Um, so you'll need to uh, enable it so you can install unsigned drivers, and that's part of the advanced boot options. Uh, there are plenty of, of sort of tutorials online that you can find to tell you how to do that. So just give it a quick Google and you'll be able to um, figure it out. But if, uh, if, like many people, you're able to uninstall them without problems, then you'll be fine. So once you've got everything installed uh, and you're running Arduino 1.5 beta, I'm on 1.5.5, um, under Tools and under Board, you'll have Digispump, Digistump, DigiX, just down here. Um, and uh, there are various examples in here that you can use as well, which only show up when you're selecting the right board. So you've got DigiFi here, you've got Basic Client, uh, Keyboard Tweet LCD, Ping, Server Example, which is the one I've modified. And uh, there are various other DigiX examples in here too. Now, this is the code I've got. Before you do any of this though, you need to set up your DigiX for your, for your wireless network. So I'll show you how to do that. So we need to connect to it. So when you power up the DigiX, it will automatically show as a, uh, as a Wi-Fi available thing to connect to. Mine shows up as DigiX2 because my computers remember remembering DigiX1 from a different thing. But uh, if I connect to that, there we go, I'm connected. So if we go over here and type in the DigiX IP, 
that's your standard IP to connect to the DDX and then it's asking me for my username and password. Now when you load this up for the first time the username and password is admin admin. So we'll log in and this is what you see. I'm not going to show you all of the, uh, the different settings uh, but I'll show you some of them. So your SSID is DigiX. I don't know why it's showing up as DigiX2 but it is and it's connected to my home network uh, and this is the IP address it's been given and because I'm telling my router to give it a fixed IP this is the one it always has and there's your MAC address as well. Now under work mode you can select it uh, either as an access point or as STA. I don't know what STA stands for um, but the advice is that you, you have both. Uh, and then under the STA setting uh, this is where you connect to your home network so you can scan and select various networks. So if I click scan it's showing me the networks so that the DigiX can see. Under the AP setting this is your network mode. I haven't changed any of the settings in here except for the channel and that's because it was conflicting with um, another thing on my network. Uh, and then you've got settings for baud rate. Now you'll need to make sure this is 9600 just in case yours isn't. Okay, well I've already set this up so I don't need to be in here anymore. But if let, let's just go back to the Arduino code. Now we've included Digify. This is a, a library that just makes it easier to communicate with the Wi-Fi. But you don't need a library to communicate with the Wi-Fi because it works uh, over serial. So you can send serial uh, commands to it. To, to control it, but the Wi-Fi library helps a lot. So what we're doing here is I've got pin 99 and this is my switch, so while it's low uh, until I uh, switch it on it will stay in this loop and won't go anywhere which is good. We definitely wanted to do that. Uh, and we're sort of Wi-Fi begin 9600, so that's the baud rate again that we showed you in the settings just now. Uh, and then debug I've set to true. Now this just throws out loads of messages uh, so that you can see what the DigiX is doing at various points, which is really important when you're when you're trying something a bit more complicated. You need to know at what point it fails and uh, at what points it, it will continue on. Now, it connects here, so string address equals wifi.server on port 8080, so it's setting up the server there. And then we come down to void loop and we get wifi.server request so if something's being requested from the server then it's going to print this out that's just serial so we don't need to worry about that and then it's going to print out where the request came from and uh, it will then print out this lovely bit of code here which is essentially a HTML file and it includes uh, an h1 tag this is a test and also the image that I showed you and this is just being served from an external server. Because my DigiX is on a network that doesn't have a fixed IP, I need to make sure that uh, my server knows what the IP is all the time. Uh, so every 120 seconds, the DigiX will perform send IP. Now send IP will change the DigiX from being a server into being a, uh, a TCP client. So it's going to request uh, a URL rather than uh, surf one up. So we've got wifi.get and then it's asking for digix.com or digix.davidjwatts.com forward slash save IP and that will alert my server to what the IP address is that it should be serving. Uh, and then once it's done that it sets up the server again. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. Let me show you some of the PHP code that enables it all to work. So here is the code for the PHP that enables my, uh, my website to kick out over digix.davidjwatts.com, so a subdomain, kick, it, kick out the uh, digix webpage. So we've got some database connection stuff here. None of this is secure, obviously. I shouldn't be putting any of this in the PHP page itself, but it's only an example. Um, so what it does, it, it requests the IP address from the database and then it will serve it up. So what it does, it gets the data from the URL using curl and then it uh, it echoes that to the page. So that's really, really simple stuff. Um, and this is the uh, the save IP address page, I guess. Um, 
and what it does it it gets the, the remote address that's requesting that page and then it appends port 8080 to it and it saves it to my database so that it can be served up here well thanks a lot for watching guys uh, it's a great little board um, you can get it from these guys is that the right way up yeah <laughs> Uh, digistump.com, they're the guys behind the DigiSpark, which I, I also picked up at the same time I picked this up uh, on a, on a pre-order. Now, it, it's more expensive than your standard Arduino board, but it comes with a lot of extra features, so it's well worth it. It's uh, better than the Dew and it's better than the Yuan as well, in terms of features. Um, and the support you get from Digistump is great. Their forums are pretty active and uh, I believe it's Eric on the forums who keeps answering all the questions that people have. Uh, and uh, he's also developing loads of libraries as well. Um, when I started uh, using this with the Wi-Fi library and I wanted to have uh, the server functionality and also the TCP client functionality so that I could request a URL, when that didn't work straight away, he, uh, he helped me out and showed me how I could do it. So, really really helpful so check it out and let me know what you guys think